pap smear is the topic and pap smear is a, a highly uh, important diagnostic uh, tool to detect cervical cancer and every year there's half a million new cases of cervical cancer worldwide and about half of these unfortunately result in death so cervical cancer is a very significant uh, cause of cancer related mortality the good news however is that the incidence over the past well, 30 years or so has decreased by 50 percent incidence of cervical cancer and this is essentially thanks to pap smears. Pap smear, of course, as I mentioned, is a cervical cancer screening test. And essentially what you're doing with this test is you're taking cells from the cervix and you're examining them under a microscope. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to look at there's look if there's any abnormality um, in these cells and if there is abnormality if you do see abnormal cells you can do more uh, specific tests such as a colposcopy and a biopsy and then sometimes more frequent pap smears pap smears that are done a little bit more often. Now, essentially what you're trying to do with pap smears is prevent cervical cancer by diagnosing and treating cervical cancer precursors. So I'll explain what that really is, means see when you have a cervical cell it doesn't go directly to becoming a cancer cell in one shot that doesn't happen what happens actually is a serv normal cervical cell will go through several stages so I'll, I'll put in a bunch of them in here so here you have the normal cell and it'll go through several stages before it ends up to be that cancerous cell. And these stages are described in uh, a lot of terminology. There's ascus, atypical squamous cells. Um, there's LGSIL, low-grade squamous in intraepithelial lesion. And there's high-grade squamous in intraepithelial lesions. These are often describes, described as dysplasia, mild dysplasia, moderate dysplasia, and severe dysplasia. So what the pap smear is doing is trying to catch these cells or these cells or, or these cells. So basically you're trying to catch these cervical cancer precursors that you can then treat uh, before they progress to full-blown cervical cancer important point is 99% of these cancer cells or cervical cancer cases are due to a virus known as HPV human papilloma virus so that's often tested quite a bit on clinical vignettes now let's talk a little bit about the screening in terms of uh, when you should do it. The thing is the cervical cancer screening has changed so many times over the years that I have to actually look at you know what is the current recommendation and here it is the current recommendation at least in North America is begin at age 21 regardless of sexual activity because before they used to say only when the person becomes sexually active but that's not regarded as part of the recommendations anymore begin at age 21 regardless and then from age 21 to 65 
do a pap smear every three years. That, that it used to be one, sometimes I used to hear two, but this is the current guideline. And then after a hysterectomy, if a woman has had one, you don't need to do a pap smear anymore because the cervix is gone, so there's nothing to uh, actually take a sample of. So these are the current guidelines. I just looked them up. And before I get to some clinical vignettes, I want to actually draw a little bit of anatomy to explain how this technique is done. This is a cervix, and this opening here is known as a cervical os, OS, and this canal in here is known as the endocervical canal. When you do a pap smear, very first thing you need to do is sample cells from the ectocervix. So this area right here, this area. And that's done with a spatula, a small specific spatula that's used during a pap smear. Then what you do, then after that you insert a small brush into the canal and sample the endocervix. So that brush, of course, would go in here. So that's the proper technique of doing a uh, pap smear. Well, let's take a look at some vignettes. 27-year-old woman comes to the office for a periodic health maintenance exam. Um, she is a healthy patient with great habits. She exercises three times a week, takes 1,500 milliliters, milligrams of calcium, does not drink or smoke, eats a low-fat, high-fiber diet. Her last pap smear, which was two years ago, was normal, and her blood pressure, body mass index, and non-fasting cholesterol have all been stable. Focused physical exam is unremarkable. You decide that a complete pelvic exam is indicated at this appointment. External genitalia, vagina and cervicus up here normal. Most appropriate next step is. Okay, well, the thing is, a lot of times these uh, screening tests change so much that it's rather unfortunate. But by the current guidelines, of course, she would only require a pap smear every three years. This question was written a few years ago. So what they're basically saying is that she should have a pap smear now. I know it's a little confusing, but basically that's what they're getting at. And what they're saying is, when you do a pap smear, what do you do first? Do you sample the endocervix first or the ectocervix? And the answer, of course, is you sample the outside first, which is the ectocervix. If you do a uh, chlamydia and gonorrhea culture, that's fine, but that would be done after you do the pap smear. Next question. 26-year-old psych resident comes to the office for a periodic health maintenance exam. She's in excellent health, marathon runner, takes calcium every day. She reports that she had an appendectomy at age 14, dilation curtage for elective abortion at age 23. She's currently in a monogamous sexual relationship with a co-worker and uses a combined oral contraceptive uh, pill. She has no history of STDs and reports having a normal pap every year since age 16. Physical exam is unremarkable. You spend time explaining the self-breast exam and doing, doing general health maintenance counseling. Two weeks later, her PAP results taken that day are returned and return as low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, LGSIL. You call her to inform that she will need to return for a colposcopic evaluation. In speaking to her about these results, it would be appropriate to explain that. Okay, well, LGSIL is fortunately mild, mild dysplasia. And the good news is that most PAPs that have LGSIL will spontaneously become normal. Only about a small number, 10%, will go and progress. So although she probably it is a good idea to have a colposcopy you could tell her to have pap smears a little more often so every six months for example so that is an acceptable approach so the answer to this question interestingly is uh, a 
most of these lesions will progress to HGSIL. Most won't, only 10% will. Uh, these results are consistent with cervical intraepithelial neoplasia 2. That's not correct. And you certainly don't need to go out and sample her endometrium. And the last one. 51-year-old woman comes with chronic back pain. Uh, she's been a patient for a number of years, uh, but you've not seen her for two years. Her last menstrual period was nine months ago. She's not sexually active. She had a cholecystectomy at age 43, ovarian cyst removal at age 23. Family history is remarkable for a father who died of MI at 59. A mother was alive and well. Sister and aunt both died of breast cancer. Father and her grandfather had diabetes. Physical exam is unremarkable. Concerning her risk for cervical cancer, most appropriate management is. Well, again, this goes to our guidelines. Basically, any woman from 21 to 65 should have a pap smear every three years. So let's see if that's one of the answer choices. Biomanual exams annually. No, she needs to have a pap smear. Colposcopy every one to two, three, one to three years. Well, not necessarily. Maybe if the pap smear showed some abnormalities, but not most appropriate. No screening is necessary as this patient is postmenopausal. Uh, that's not true. She's 51. We don't really go by postmenopausal or premenopausal. We go by age. No screening is necessary based upon her age. Not true. So even without looking at the last answer, we've narrowed it down to that. But it is true. Pap smear testing every one to three years and the actual specific number is three years. So the answer to this question is E.